Hello, Fiverrifians. Welcome, welcome. So there's no pre-stream role today. Hopefully that's okay with everybody. So the chat's been going hard. Good morning, chat. Uh, we are running with some different software today. So fingers crossed that it all looks and works okay. I'm just opening up some other things so I can see what's happening. Let me know in the chat if you can see and you can hear and all that sort of thing. Um, so it doesn't appear to be happening. Oh, there we go. I've got an ad. So there we go. <laughs> That's a bit terrifying. So let me know in the chat if you can see and you can hear and all that sort of stuff. That would be grand. Um, Kathy can hear me. Thank you, Kathy. All right, so I'm just jumping into the YouTube software on my laptop just so that I can, you know, do things. Hello, Carol. Welcome to the chat. Ads, ads, ads from Chaos Creator. Oh, you can hear me. Good morning, everybody. So we've got we've got a different setup today, and there is this very special reason why we have a different setup today. Um, is that I'm using different software. I'm using StreamYard software, and those of you that saw what I did with um, with uh, the Big Wool Show knows that I use stream oh louis is running around in the background ruth um look at that ruth who's in the background thanks joss looks and sounds great that's a great photo of you joss um so to use Streamyard software i have to do things a bit differently and everything will look a bit differently and i don't have access to all the features i would normally have access to okay so be prepared for that if i'm a bit slow that's what we're blaming. We're not going to blame anything else. We're blaming that. So what I want to do is introduce our special guest today. We have Scott Snyder coming in from Snyder Spindles. Hey, hey Scott. Guys. How's it going? So if everybody can let me know if you can hear and you can see Scott. That would be great. So thank you so much for joining us, Scott, and being the guinea pig. I hope that not, you feel okay about that. Not a problem. Thank you for having me. It feels weird. I'm not used to having somebody to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I'm just, my dog's running around trying to like empty boxes. Luffy, stop that. He's like, I'll, I'll unpack this box for you. Um, <laughs> okay. Everyone can hear you. We've got Chaos Creator saying hi to Scott, Knit Spin Girls saying hi. Um, so that is awesome. So, Scott, tell us what you do. Um, I'm a fiber tool maker. I'm a spindle maker from uh, Wisconsin in the United States. Um, I've been doing it full time since about 2013. Um, and I just, I fell in love with spinning. So that, that's why I do that. That was going to be my next question. Like, what got you in? to tool making for spinners like it's a it's an odd one it, it, it is um i was making t little toys and signs and selling them on etsy and somebody contacted me asking me to make a turkish spindle so okay. i decided I, I wanted to make one but i wanted to make sure it would work so yeah. i went to my local yarn shop and uh they took me under their wing taught me how to spin and uh that was about it so Wow, and the rest is history. Pretty much, yeah. So your um, first spindle that you made was a Turkish? It was a Turkish, yep. Okay, because they're the best, just, just throwing that out there. <laughs> I like them too. Yeah, we've got, um, hang on, my mouse won't work. There we go. Carol is saying, hope to see you at Rhinebeck soon. I, I'm putting in my application for Rhinebeck again. We'll, we'll see what happens. Um, I was here previous years uh, with another vendor and... Uh, so I'm trying to get my own booth now. So yeah, oh, that's awesome because it's one thing to share a booth; it is definitely another thing to have your own. Right, having your own is awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, when I very first went to Bendigo, I had my own booth, but I was right next to somebody who was like took me under their wing. So while I wasn't technically sharing, I was looked after, which was a nice feeling. But you know, you only get that for the first year. <laughs> right then you're on your own 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So you make a whole swathe of different things. Like you definitely make lots of different styles of Turkish spindles, but you also make your drop spin spindles and you make um, – the Scottish spindles, <laughs> right. they have a name that I can't pronounce. It's it's Jalligan spelled with a D. I'm, I'm not sure why, you know. That's just okay. the Celtic it's pronunciation. A Scottish thing. But, it's a, yep. Yep, we do that, definitely. Do yeah. you have a favorite? Like, do you have a personal favorite? My personal favorite is a full-size glider Turkish spindle. This guy right here. If I was this stuck in an right island, here. that guy right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite hands down. There's nothing wrong yeah. with the other ones. It's, this is no, no, my that's all right. You're allowed to have a favorite. Yeah. Awesome. So you work with like 11 billion different styles of wood, like types of wood. How do you, A, find out they exist and B, get them? Luckily, I, I live about 40 minutes away from a, a mill that imports a lot of wood. And the imported wood, they sell it in small pieces so I can buy yeah. small quantities of it because you know they sell eight foot tall boards that are four feet wide but you know I'm not going to drop you know eight hundred dollars on that board so since I can buy, buy smaller pieces you know I can pay forty or fifty dollars for a smaller board and then you yeah. know able to and get trial multiples. it out yeah have you have you found a timber that just doesn't work for spindles uh not really um I, I I'm beginning to hate Wange it's just really hard to work with. It's nothing yeah. against. I, I've got one. Got one here. I mean, it, it's pretty wood, but it's just. It's like it is beautiful. trying to work through saw through cement. It, it's just uh, a pain but to work with. Yeah. So, and I I tend to avoid softwoods. I don't use pine or anything like that. Because I just so, like they would ding. Yeah. Because yeah. the reality is, while Turkish spindles aren't called drop spindles, we do. Drop we do them. drop them, right? Because <laughs> that's the thing. Like, I've had spindles before where they were a drop spindle, but when I dropped it, it broke. And I was really heavily disappointed, and I was so worried when I was making my first Scott Snyder purchase. What have you got? Oh, hang on. He's got – hang on. <laughs> Don't eat. <laughs> The things. <laughs> Your little tea light. He's just legit eating a, a. It's got a battery in it. Hang on, I gotta put my my audio thing back on. He's so disappointed now. Like it's I don't know. You can't see it because it's so bright, but it's legit. Has a battery. And it's like a little flicker. Anyway, like far out. He's trashed it. Now it looks like it's like legit got flame because it's all crispy and like, <laughs> oh, all right, chat. Like you guys have got questions for Scott, I'm sure. Make sure you get them in and I'll throw them up on screen as well. <laughs> Lindsay says, poor dog, he just wants internet flame, uh, <laughs> internet fame. <laughs> He wants my attention is what it is. I got home this morning. I had to do like a whole pile of running around and I've walked in the door and he's like, oh, my God, you've been gone for hours. And then I'm like, yeah, yeah, no time for this and running around. So normally I would have played with him for half an hour and left him in the house. But I knew today would be a crying day. He would literally, he howls if I'm out in the shack and he's in the house because he can't have free reign of the yard because he chases the chickens and he just latches onto their tail feathers and just walks around behind them. He doesn't try to hurt them. He really wants those tail feathers. <laughs> it's kind of funny. He just like, <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, Leanne might be a bit behind in the, uh, in the stream there. Uh, Carol has a question for you. Here we go. What are some of your new cutout designs? Um. The cutout designs haven't changed too much in the last year. Um, I would have to ask Vicky. Any idea, honey? What? What's our last cutout design that we made? It's been a while. We've got like 14 different designs, so yeah, it's been a little while. 
And is it like with the, with the cutout designs, is it basically on, on people's like 20 people have asked for a particular style of thing, so I'm going to try and make a thing? Or is it just like, oh, this looks cool, I'm going to try that? It's a combination of both. Yeah. Okay. The, right. So, yeah, we got like five or six that are popular, and, and we make those a lot. But, yeah, we I, I do take requests, so... Okay, you know. good to know. Good to know. Um, I have got a T Rex, which I love, I, I, but it's a bit. It's like old school. Seriously, what have you got now? Yarn. <laughs> um, <laughs> bringing the dog in is probably not my best decision. Um, Game Widow says that she has a dragonfly and a dash hound on her wish list. Do you do you not do dragonfly? Oh, Louie. Yeah, I do. Another one. Hang on. That's me. So, yeah, I, I, the dragonfly I tend to keep in stock. The dachshund, you might have to send me a message to make it. I, I make a dachshund and a greyhound um, and a wolf on occasion. So. Awesome. Louis looking at me like I've just destroyed all his fun because now I took both. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, so what makes you decide, okay, we've been making the Turkish gliders for ages, we've been doing mini spindles for ages, let's bring in something new. What makes you decide that? But then also what makes you go with a particular thing? Like what's your process? Um. Really, when I when I come up with something new, it's because I'm itching for a different spindle for myself. Um, you know, I, I recently uh, just uh, changed uh, the plying spindle. Now it's very glider shaped and much bigger. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty much you know, it, it it's kind of fit my own needs. So I get that. I, that's what I do. I'm like you mm. know. What new stock line will I have? Well, I want to try this thing. <laughs> right. So sometimes you just have an idea. You got to try it out, you know? Yeah. And, and sometimes you just got to make something for yourself. Um, so I, I made this for myself. What does it say? It oh, says yarn, yarn and it. made. Yeah. So oh, that's a Heinz Doofenshmirtz I... from Phineas and Ferb. Obviously, I can never sell it, but I, I needed it for myself. Yeah. So. So there and you sometimes go. it's it's awesome just to do something for yourself. You know you can't sell it. Right. But I, I needed it for myself. <laughs> um, Kim's saying I've got an echo somewhere. It's probably oh. coming from my end. Um, I don't know. It could be coming from anywhere. This is all new. So mm. I'm just we can pretend we're in a canyon. Oh, I'll have to. Is the echo terrible? You guys have to tell us if it's like annoying because I can't hear an echo. Right. Carol says she doesn't hear it. I don't know. That's odd. Anyway, sorry. Live streaming. This is what happens. Right. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, John Dragon says it seems to be gone. All right, cool. I uh, says so not all the time, but sometimes when you are speaking. Okay. All right. Well, you know, we'll learn for next time. I'm not quite sure. So it's coming from my end more than likely. So when I'm talking, are you getting the echo? I don't hear it. Hmm. Anyway. <sighs> How do I remove that when it's so far up? There we go. Hide. There we go. Okay. Knit Spin Girl says, my daughter took one of your baby Turkish spindles with her to Nepal a few years ago. Oh, so that's it awesome. traveled from the US to Australia and then back to Nepal. Wow. Apparently it's me. Apparently I'm the one echoing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Um, I'm just going to check my audio settings. Okay, cancellation. Yeah, I can't see anything to change. 
That's this is the downside of new technology, everybody. This is the downside. Poor Scott, total guinea pig. That's all right. I like okay. guinea pigs. You like guinea pigs? I've heard you have guinea pigs, don't you? I, I, I used to have them, yeah. I'm taking oh, a okay. break. Uh, yeah, I understand that. Yeah. They just don't Sally's, live long enough. Well, because what is the average lifespan of a guinea pig? You get five, six years out of them. Oh, that's that's like just early enough for me. Like, like it's just long enough for you to get attached. Pretty much, yeah. Oh, I mean, they're a little animal that's usually caught and eaten by bigger animals. So five years is good. Right. But, but you know, like, not as a pet. That's why I don't like birds as pets. Yep. Also, birds are messy. Yep, Jean Luc was awesome. That was one <laughs> of like three guinea pigs ago. Yeah. Yep. Um, we've got a message here from Melissa saying, "I'm eagerly awaiting my first shipment of spindles from you. They are on their way." Nice. Awesome. I have no control over the postal system. That's all right. Melissa and everybody here knows we have the same problems here. I'm just going to think my can, laptop's not happy. Can I show I'm all just, the sizes? I mean, you, you might be able to show some of the sizes. Right. So the gliders come in three sizes. So they come in a mini a medium, and a full size. Um, and uh, here's a standard. Now the size below this, do we have any recalls or are they all sold? And do we have a mini? I'm talking, I'm, I'm sorry guys, I'm talking to Vicky. So Vicky is Scott's girlfriend. Girlfriend, thank you, Scott. Yeah. Who also works at Snyder Spindles full time. Is that right? That is correct. She does so all. So you guys are cranking out so many spindles. You need two people full time. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, yeah, and we're we're very very busy, which is a good thing. Um, but yeah. In a few years, we might expand. We'll see. So as far as the crescent shaped, we got a mini. And then a recoff, which is Dutch for fawn, which is a medium size. And then the standard. Yeah. And then the cutouts are slightly bigger than the standard. A little bit heavier. And so there's yeah. a dragonfly. There's a dragonfly. Yeah. <laughs> so these are hand cut. These are all hand cut on the, the scroll saw. That being said, we do have uh, laser engraved ones. These are uh, the Apex. Um, they're kind of a smaller spindle, kind of a medium size. Yeah, they've um, got like the shorter but chunkier arms. Yeah. So that's the Chantel spindle, short, chunky arms. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Me, <laughs> me too. Um, and then let's see. You have a playing spindle? Okay, so Vicky's going to yeah, take out the plant so spindle. Awesome, Vicky. So we have yeah. just so much stuff in process right now. Oh, absolutely. And we're like, just show us all your things. Right. Um, Yarn it out says the dragonfly is pretty. It's very pretty. How hard is it to use? Like, Because like, you have to nail down how to use like a ton of different equipment. Yeah. Like. The scroll saw has always, I've looked at, like, because a, a long, long time ago you, you did a, a video where you were using your scroll saw. And I was just like, oh, God, how? <laughs> well, I, my father brought home a scroll saw when I was 12. And uh, yeah. I, I fell in love with it. Um, no internet, no cable, um, no cable television. Back in I, the day. <laughs> I had a bicycle. I lived in the country, you know. I, yeah. I, could go, I could go pet a goat, but that really, you know, was about it. So and I goats spend a lot aren't of always time. friendly. <laughs> no, they're not. Sometimes, yes. Quite often, grumpy. Yeah. Because, like, would you not be grumpy if you just ate random things like right. green wiper blades and <laughs> whatever you can get your teeth on? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yarded out saying that they see wooden spoons in the back. Oh. 
So I did not make the wooden spoons, but I laser engraved them. Um, so uh, I did this for 420 this year. So my special brownie oh. spoon. And then it's got some sort of palm leaf or something on it. Oh, yeah, palm so, leaf. Yeah, let's go with that. Yeah, yeah. So. Goodness me. Yeah. My mouse is not working. I can't. There we go. Oh, there we go. Um, Lindsay has a question for you. Is is one shape of the arms easier to learn with than the others? Um, I would say they're equal, but I would probably go with a larger spindle. When you first start out, the bigger the spindle, the slower it's going to spin, but it's going to spin longer. Yeah. So I, I tend to people, start people out with either a full-size glider, a cutout, or a standard. Hey, there's another one. Yeah. So these are the deco. Oh, wow. They're cute. So... See, when I'm discussing spindles with people, um, I recommend lighter spindles. I don't necessarily talk about the size of the arms, but I talk about the lightness because there's a particular company here in Australia, oh, well, they're a New Zealand company, but they sell their spindles in Australia, that they have these beginner spindles that I swear to God, the second you try and connect any fibre to them, they're so heavy they just drop on the ground. And beginners are frustrated. So I always recommend a spindle anywhere between sort of 30 to 50 grams for, right. for a beginner. And then you can choose where, because I like my spindles under 30, like 20 to 30 for myself. So um, that's why these are great because they've got thin, long arms. You can still load them with heaps, but they're not heavy. They're not, they're not physically overly heavy. weighty. They're big, but not heavy. Well, the, the the company that starts with an A in New Zealand, yeah, they're not yeah, they're not them. as bad. They're not as bad as a company in Poland that oh, starts really? with a K. Um, I I don't they they their top world is three ounces. Um, oh. let's uh, let's figure that out. Yeah, thank you. Convert that for us. It's under a hundred grams, but like 70, 75 grams. Is that right? Eighty five. Oh my god! It's a boat anchor. You, yeah, you could, kill, you it could is. kill somebody with it. You could, yeah. you could like attach some fiber to it and use it as a weapon. Yep. Oh, John O'Brien's being cheeky. Australia, New Zealand, same thing. <laughs> well, one says ACDC, the other says Akadaka. I, I was told yeah, that. Yeah, that's right. It's different. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. Um, and Peter yeah, Jackson. Yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. And, and that's about it. <laughs> yep. We've got Yanada asking a question. Can you engrave a channel name on them? Absolutely. There you go. So if they, if someone wants something special, when they order through the Etsy store, which is linked below in the description, um, is there's an area where they can make requests or a way to contact you? On the left-hand side, there's a contact seller, and you can send me a message, and then uh, I can start a custom listing from there. So... Awesome, because like at the end of the day, we all need Snyder spindles. Like I, I would hope I, so. I can't yeah. actually work out exactly how many I have. <laughs> I can look it up. No, I'm... it's at least five. Well, um, I know I bought some from an Australian seller who was selling them on your behalf at one stage. Um, so I've I probably got a couple more than what you've got listed. <laughs> Could be, yeah. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I've got a few. I've got a few. I'm just getting through the chat here. Um, Yana has a question. I need some wooden crochet hooks with my name on them. How hard is that to do? Ooh, I, I don't make crochet hooks. Um, there you go. Yeah. yeah. So I can laser engrave on them, but it wouldn't so make sense to send them own. here. Well, Yana Dat's not in Australia. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that could be a discussion that you guys have. Sure. Um, uh, Carol was wondering what your favorite was again. She knows you've mentioned my, it, but. My favorite is a full size glider. Um. <laughs> Actually, I think this is a medium. I think my full size is inside. <laughs> this might be the medium glider. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I'm a big fan of the gliders, I love them a lot. Um, Lynn, oh, hang on. Yep, not good, so heavy. Um, I really like the Crescenty medium one. Um, mm -hmm. It would figure it's not the best for my lack of skill. Well, um, the crescent-shaped ones are a little bit heavier than the gliders, so 
Um, yeah. You know, I would it, have to say when it comes to learning how to spindle, I think any of the shapes that Scott has are all good because it's it's one of those things, if you're wanting to learn how to do something and you're getting to use a beautiful piece of equipment versus that dodgy, stupid, stick a CD on a pencil thing, right, like right. I hate that attitude. Get yourself something that you're going to love and if you go with something from Scott, you're going to find that no matter what, it's going to work. And it just might mean that you need to watch an extra video. You need to sit down. You might have to give it a bit more time. But I would say any of Scott's are worth learning on. Maybe not the minis. The minis would be trickier to learn on. Right. They're, they're, they're too small. Is there but, a limit to how much yarn the spindle can hold? Um, yeah. You know, the, the full size, you can get four ounces on. Um, the, the smaller ones... The, it's going to be the smaller the spindle, the thinner the yarn. So I don't know. It's a variable. It, it all depends how you wrap as well. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I'm not done yet. I've got arms here. So oh, instead of wrapping wow. around instead of wrapping around the arms, I'm wrapping in the centers. Uh, you're wrapping so around the bulk. Yes. Yeah, so I'm bypassing the arms. Oh, so. wow. That's fantastic. So how much is on that one? Um, I'm guessing probably about four, a little bit okay. better. Okay, all right. So, how much more would you put on that? It, until it starts uh, breaking my my spinning, and then I would stop. Okay, <laughs> when it stops yeah, that's being a good reason. Yeah, you know, yeah. You, you could use it as a, as a supported spindle from that point if you really wanted to pack it on. Yeah. So just when it stops wow. being fun, is, is is it? That's a good rule for anything, really. That's, yeah. I've never seen one that full, honestly. Um. Game Widows and I, we were at um, the Fibre Fit Retreat and we did, we compared um, our spinning techniques and I'm a process spinner, I'm a process crafter. I like doing the things, I don't necessarily finish anything. Um, whereas Game Widows is spins for a project and she will just spin like a crazy person until it's done. Um, we've, what have we got here? Um If you need Australian resellers, I reckon Chantelle would be up for it. There's a uh, yeah, that's a, that's there's a fairly good chance of that. Right. Uh, <laughs> but he ships to Australia, so why not just go direct? Honestly, um, so yeah, I just do myself out of a job. <laughs> I do wholesale, so yeah. All right, well, I, I'll definitely have to keep it in mind then. Um, we've got like some events and stuff coming up. I'm teaching Turkish spindle spinning at the Crochet Guild first conference the first australian crochet guild conference next week nice so it's very exciting a little stressed but you know it's all good yeah. it's all good um i had another question for you my brain just lost it i should possibly have written them down um <laughs> oh my goodness i saw something in the in the chat and i was just like oh kim says she needs a laser cutter kim would just have an entire workshop if she could um laser cutters are fun yeah absolutely absolutely um <laughs> lindy says you just buy all the stock for yourself anyway i mean <laughs> that could happen that's not beyond it's, the realms it, you're testing them for reselling that that's absolutely. it absolutely yeah. absolutely mm. so what i was saying before like if you're a beginner sometimes just knowing that someone like Scott makes good equipment and that's enough because there are some spindles out there that are being sold that are not balanced. They're not made by spinners and they look beautiful and they're useless. They're expensive, useless things. And so knowing that there are people out there like Scott who are tried and true and Scott's a spinner, that to me is a dead giveaway. If a spindle maker is not a spinner or doesn't have a spinner in their life i'm just like right. how did you test it to make sure it was centered right how, how did you come up with the design how do you know you know is it the right weight you know yeah and, yeah i've been to shows yeah. found the most gorgeous spindle in the world like 125 dollars. i picked it up and it was just garbage yeah, and, and people who don't know are gonna buy it yeah that's right and, and that's that's a thing, and I think it's an important thing to remember is 
not all tools are created equal and just because it's dear doesn't mean it's good very true yep so yeah it's definitely definitely one of those things um leanne has a question for you have you ever visited australia i have not i would love to in fifth grade i had a foreign exchange student teacher my teacher was from australia and uh it, i i've wanted to go ever since fifth grade so maybe someday well probably not anytime soon <laughs> that's true although i am vaccinated I'm you're vaccinated saying. i'm trying yeah. to get vaccinated but i you know it's hard yeah like in australia if you're under 50 i think they've just changed the rules today um but under 50 in australia trying to get a vaccination is near impossible um we've got here we go a message Lindsay says, the one I have is gorgeous, but it's so light, it barely feels like there's anything there. And the finish is so slippery, I can't get anything started. So I've yet to learn. Oof. That's the thing. Your shafts are burnished but not varnished. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. There's um paste wax on them. Yeah. There's a little bit of wax to protect, but, yeah, they're not varnished. Yeah, they're no. not. They're grippy. You can, you can yeah. feel that they would still have, like, they're not coarse. But you could you could still feel like that they are um, they would grip, but they're not varnished. Yeah, they're not think, slick. Yeah, and that's that makes a spindle useless. I think if the shaft is varnished, what's the point? Yep, that's my personal opinion. I don't make spindles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was, that's what it was. I was like looking at this, and I was like, "Do you fly on the fly? Have you tried that fly on the fly technique?" So yeah, you. Sure. Yep. I taught Vicky how to do it and Vicky does it on streams and everyone's like, oh, Vicky can fly on the fly. And I'm like, yeah, I taught her. <laughs> yeah. I love yeah. it. I think it's yeah. great. I've been doing it for a while now and I taught Chintamani who is probably kicking herself if she's not in the chat today because she's now obsessed. Um, but I was like looking at your giant spindle going, mm, fly on the fly. <laughs> right. That you would can make be... some bulky yarn. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is, this is, this is plied here and it's, it's for, it's like, light fingering weight i would say is what that's coming out at because i i spindle spin for pleasure i don't sell spindles except for the marja craft turkish but that's because i sell all the other marja craft stuff mm -hmm. and i don't sell hand spun yarn so when i spindle it's for me it's it's like i've had to like and i was going to ask you this as well what have you done to um differentiate between your passion and keeping your passion alive and work like is there a line somewhere where you're like okay i love to do this but i'm not selling it or do you just you know free for all yeah it's pretty much a free for all um you know the yarn i spin i never sell i keep it for myself and i use it um vicky the stuff that she hand spins on stream she gives away yeah. um and yeah any project i make that's not spinning it is for me um um so people ask me don't i get sick of making the same thing over and over and over again and i'm like it's much better than having to go to a job and punch a clock and work for somebody else for you know i spent 20 years in factories i think that was enough yeah. so yeah yeah and that also like factory work and that those sort of repetitious jobs helps you to like everyone's like, oh, they're drone work, but they actually really help you to focus and work quickly and so that you can create processes for yourself and maybe not work to the same level of quickness because you are working for yourself and you can be like to the boss. Um, <laughs> but you can set up processes and you understand why processes are done it's and true. why bulk making mm -hmm. and doing things like do a million in this step and then do a million in this step and then do a bazillion in this step and then combine them all together and look what I have rather than going bit, bit, bit done. Yeah. Yep. It, it's hard when people ask, how long does it take to make a spindle? I, I don't know. I, I spend one day making arms the next day making shafts and yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. We have an interesting person in the chat. Uh, there we go. Mod dealt with it. Excellent. Thank you. I missed um, it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think some people jump into live streams not realizing they're going to be like yarn craft and they don't always, um, they're not always excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, where are we? Someone asked what fly on the fly. Here it is. Yarn Dragons Creations. What is ply on the fly? Would you like to 
describe that, Scott. Okay, so plying on the fly is chain plying in um, one step. So you spin a single, then you ply it. You spin a single, then you ply it. Uh, you can't do it on a wheel. It has to be done on a spindle. So I'm just going to spin a length. And basically, it's, it's chain plying or end plying or Navajo plying. So I'm just going to make a crochet loop, and I'm going to pull through. So now I have my loop and the single I was working on. So now it's ready to be plied together. So instead of spinning clockwise, we always ply in the opposite direction. So I'm going to spin counterclockwise. So there we have three plied yarn. Yeah. So we're going to put that on the spindle. And we're going to park the loop. So this is our working loop. We're just going to put it on an arm. Spin another single. Hi, Gail. Welcome to the chat. Hey, Freaky Geek. So pick up the, the loop again. Come back, put a half inch in, and then uh, feed our working yarn through the loop. We have another chain. Apply that together. And then put it on the spindle and just keep repeating that. So at the end of the day, when, you, when you're when you done, uh, when you take the yarn off the spindle, you have plied yarn ready to do something with. So. Yeah. I guess that's. I guess that's good enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's an excellent description. So, and that's what I'm doing here. And what I tend to do is I tend to, because I'm very lazy and I like to do like one bit a lot. So I will load up the cob with a lot of um, the single, then ply a whole pile of it and then wind that on. So all this is plied yarn down here. I don't know if you can see that. Come on, camera, yeah. you can do it. Get my face out of the way. There we go. Cover my face. There we go. So that's all plied yarn there. And then, yeah, and it's it's a lot of fun. It's just a different way to do things. None, No way is wrong. If you get what you want at the end, you haven't done it wrong. Right. Um, oh, Game Widow says witchcraft. <laughs> oh, gosh. Pentagram spindle around here somewhere. Oh, my gosh. Knit Spin Girl says you made that look so easy. Well, it's like casting on and knitting. The first time you do it, it's impossible. The hundredth time you close your eyes and away you go. You're not even watching anymore. That's the yeah. thing. It just becomes a process that you're doing. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Freaky Geek says that he does more of the single than ply at the time, sort of like what I do, Freaky. Um, let me have a look here. Here we go. Game Widow says some have stitch craft. We've got play craft. I don't know what that means. That's okay. <laughs> um, that's like a trick where you can make thinny yarn into bulky with the single strand. Same technique. Yes, it is. It's exactly mm -hmm. the same. And that's where that technique came from is that whole um, uh, you're calling it uh, calling it Navajo plying is now fr frowned upon, but um, uh, chain plying, that's what I was looking for. Chain plying is, can be used if you've got like a, if you've got like um, a lace weight yarn and you can chain ply that as you're crocheting or knitting with it to turn that into more of a, a DK to a worsted weight yarn. Um, hang on, my mouse is being a butt face. Um, here we go. That's amazing. Thank you for explaining the process. I was wondering how to get a thicker yarn from spinning. Mm -hmm. And if plied you... yarn is nice to work with. It I is. Mean, you pretty much are always using plied yarn. So Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Um, so uh, Kay, uh, Kim has just popped in the link for down the bottom. It's also in the description below, at least it should be. I put it there. Whether it's still there is a whole other question. Um, so there is a, um, a link to Snyder Spindles that you can go directly to. Um, now, one question I have for you, Scott. Um, oh, here we go. I think, Carol, you can – I don't know if you just missed it while you were looking at his website, which is totally understandable. But um, if you want to come back and watch the replay, you can scrub through. Scott just gave us a quick demonstration of how to ply on the fly. Uh, Kim says it's not in the description. Oh, 
Is there anything in the description is my question. Let me have a look here. Uh, I put a whole pile of stuff in the description. I mean, there is stuff in the description, but not that. Thank you for adding it, Kim. I appreciate that. Thank you. I, I'll add it in later. <laughs> um, I was going to ask, so, so you, you, you make and sell spindles, obviously, which are delicious and we love them to pieces, but that's not all you make and sell. No, I, I, I do like null binding needles. Um, I do lucettes, stitch markers, earrings. Um, I may have an null binding needle. I've got to learn how to use it yet, but I've got one. It's pokey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, oh, that's the other thing I have, sheep. Yep. I make a lot of sheep. Hang on, let me show me show you our sheep. The sheep. So you, uh, Sally, we've got a um a, a specific link that we're using today. Oh my god, look at all those sheep. Oh, so these oh. are all the 3D printed sheep we have for right now. Um oh. so they're adorable. <laughs> they are adorable. I've also got a dark, I've got three. So I've also got a dark blue one, but he's inside. Um <laughs> Oh my goodness. So sometimes we have six 3D printers going just making sheep. So really? And and because because that's the other thing. Like you've got laser cutter. R run through all the equipment that you've got, Scott. Like it's okay. not just like you and a and a, and a pen knife whittling away. It's no. like an entire production. Yeah. So I've got a six 3d printers i've got a laser engraver in here and then i've got i've got a wood shop i've got a couple lays a band saw a table saw a chop saw um we got some sanders um obviously a scroll saw some a drill yeah. press you know just a lot of wood i don't have a ton of equipment as far yeah. as the wood shop goes but you know for what i'm making i don't need a huge workshop yeah so I'm working. Look, seriously, laser cut, laser etching, and 3D printing, and like, do you have a CNC? No, I do not. Not yet. Okay. I don't. I don't have room list? for one. It is. All Once right. we move, yeah. I, I I hope to get a bigger work area. So. Yeah. Oh. The sheep are uh, are chatskis, so they're cute. What are chatskis? Um, a, a small little knickknack that's really doesn't have a function. Yeah. Um, I, I, they're great for like Monopoly or board games. Um, oh, I didn't even you, think you can be of a that. Sheep. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's it. Are oh, these going into the games area now? Because <laughs> I've just been keeping them, except for yeah. the blue one. He's he's like on the top of my other monitor. Um, so yeah. someone was asking. I missed it, but someone was asking how to use the nail binding needles. I, I've no idea. I've got to learn. It was one of the things. Like I wanted to try this wood in particular because Scott was waxing lyrical about it at some stage during a live stream because yeah. Scott has tons and tons of live streams, either YouTube and Twitch. And so do you, you normally post your um, your schedule up on your Facebook group page. Is that right? That, that's right. Um, we're taking a little break right now um, yeah. from streaming just to try to get caught up with stuff. So, so not a whole lot yeah. going on right now, but. I we got shows up coming up, up and I just it up. <laughs> right, right. You can watch old streams if you've never seen them before. VODs. They're brand new for Hello. you. <laughs> Check out Scott's YouTube channel. He's got right? tons of stuff in there. We're normally just talking to each other, but it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. So, um yeah. so so now binding. What, do you know much about that yourself or or was it? Something Not, that people ask for and you made it. It's something people ask for and I made it. Um, yeah. I, I can do the Oslo stitch, which is basically, think of it, it, it came before knitting and crochet. It's kind of closer to crochet than knitting, but you're making knots. So okay. if you make something out of it, um, you see like people wearing like um, socks from thousands of years ago and they'll have a hole in it but it, it wouldn't have ran because everything is knotted together. So oh. it's, it's not like, you know, you're not going to be able to, uh, yeah. You know, okay. Well, I'm very excited to that. learn how to do it. I've got to find some videos mm -hmm. and some time. Yeah. Um, that's, that's a hard thing. How do you prioritize your time? Like you've got so much on the go. 
like I, between like usually when you are live streaming production shows being a human with a family like how do you make it all work like it's a big task um it's easier said than done <laughs> to be honest um you know I, i'm working from home so yeah you know I, I can be like dolly parton and stumble from my bed and stumble to the kitchen um i uh you know it, i'm here so I, I, tr I try to balance everything um but you know just doesn't always work it doesn't always work but you know i'm i try my best to keep things in stock <laughs> yeah <laughs> so sometimes you know I, I, yeah. i'm pretty much out of top worlds right now i got a bunch in there hopefully in the next day or two i'll have more top worlds in stock so is the sheep stl on thingiverse yeah it is yep uh oh kim goes to the library and hits up the 3d printers yep. look for stackable sheep it, it's a it's been on thingiverse for a very long time there so. you go yep. oh my gosh um I'm not ignoring you. I'm just like listening to Scott. I have a human to talk to, you guys. <laughs> um, John wants the sheep. Give us the sheep. Can people buy the sheep off your website as well, or is it just something you pop in with orders? There, there's some, just something I pop in. Yeah. Well, John, you'll have to buy a spindle to get a sheep. So, or, deal or with go that. to Thingiverse. Yeah. Yeah. Or make library. your own. That's yeah. right. Make it in whatever color you want. <laughs> Oh, wow. Is there somebody in the chat that we – did I miss – there's a new person. Uh, Matthew Harris Gaming is probably spamming us, but he wants a happy birthday for his friend. Happy birthday, Wow, friend. let's not do that. That's not good. Okay. Oof. I don't know. Uh Yeah. All right, yeah, we'll scroll not past. good at all. Yeah, we'll we'll skip that one. All right, you got to get up on. pretty early in the morning. Yeah. Oh well, I don't know any of these people, so I always right, get right, taken right. in. That's how Freaky ended up being here. Freaky was a troll. <laughs> now Freaky lives with us. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I mean Freaky's still a bit of a troll, but in a good way. You've got to watch what Freaky and John say because they try to trick you. They think it's hilarious. It is right. hilarious, but sometimes there's just things you can't. You're like, mm, 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 no, mm -hmm. you guys are the worst. Um, John's like, I'm going right now. I'm a make green sheep. <laughs> yeah. Johnny, you still banned on Facebook. You're still going hard on TikTok. I see. Um, Freaky says I've only just learned about nail binding thing last month. There you go. Oh, there's going to be a lot of people making sheep now that they know how to make sheep. Um, oh, I made one that was like this big. Oh, and wow. I put, I put it in an order. So person ordered a spindle and I got a, a huge sheep. <laughs> so Were they little. shocked? Did they yeah. mention something? They, they're oh, like, oh, yeah, that's just the sheep. <laughs> it, it was it was a normal customer, a repeat customer. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, and so, yeah. So we, we knew her, so. I thought it was funny. Oh, awesome. We love Freaky. Yes, we do. We very much do. Kim said, uh, sorry, not Kim, Sally, the other Kim, um, said that she would be making sheep if she had access to a 3D printer. But they're, they're so, what made you decide to add them in? Like, that's something like, now, hello, it's totally railroaded the chat. Um, what made you decide that, okay, I'm going to add in little 3D printed sheep to the mix, like regularly? Um, I, I think I came upon the file and printed some out for myself. And I'm like, oh, these are fun, you know, and, you know, oh, I'm going to make stitch markers and earrings out of them. And then I'm like, just start yeah. throwing them in the box. And I didn't plan on doing it forever, but then I kind of got known for doing that. So if I didn't put a sheep in, I'd probably hear about it. I'd be disappointed if I like, yeah. it's no freaking sheep. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, I, spindle. Where's the sheep? <laughs> you know, sometimes they just get thrown in the bottom of the box. I wonder how many sheep got thrown away not realizing they were in there. So. Oh, wow. Uh, Lindsay's like, but there is sheep earrings. So there are sheep earrings on your store. I haven't, I didn't check yeah. it. What happens, mm -hmm. Scott, is I don't go to your store because every time I do, I come away poorer. <laughs> like, so, yeah. 
because it's one of those things like if you spot it and you like it you have to order it because it may not be there and everything's handmade right so you know for me it's dangerous yeah <laughs> i i, I hear you yeah. there's places i avoid as well yeah yeah <laughs> what, what kind of places do you avoid i avoid stationery stores hardware stores yours <laughs> that's about it I, 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 I try to stay away from specialty woodworking shops. Um, we got a couple different ones here. Um, Amazon is bad. Because oh, Amazon is just so convenient. Because I'm on first name basis with our local Amazon delivery guy. I'm like, oh, Prime. So I don't have to pay for shipping. So, yeah. I'm actually it, waiting on something today. I had I had something arrive yesterday. And now I'm like, something else is coming today. It's like Santa Claus. <laughs> Except you have to pay for it. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, we've got some questions. Sorry, I'm very bad at this, you guys. I'm new to this whole, you know, throwing your comments up. I love it. I love that I can put the comments up. Um, but yeah, like lots of people saying how much they would love to have gotten a super sized. Oh, Sally, is it Sally? Yep, Sally's just seen your pens. I've been watching you make the pens, and they are beautiful. Oh, thank what do they like to write with? Actually, um, they're not bad. I was surprised. Um, you know, they come with the kit. You buy a kit, yeah. and they they write really nice. They, they flow real good. So oh, I I was awesome. amazed. And that's um, a pet peeve when a pen like looks pretty like I like a fiber effect pen. Oh, um, it, when a pen looks pretty but then is not functional. Like I like a good pen with a bit of weight to it. These ones I love. But they but they write beautifully as well, which was like sweet as because I could have I could have gone cheaper and I could have gotten like double the amount. Right. Oh my gosh. So the whole That's idea behind beautiful. the pens is they're primarily made out of scraps for making the spindles. Mm -hmm. So if I'm making this, I have a little piece left over. Instead of burning yeah. it, I make it into a pen, and this is what's paying for our wood to put in our fireplace over the winter. So, so wow. So you're making the pens out of the offcuts off the spindles, and then that's now paying your heating, like your wood heating bills. Right. The the fireplace we have a furnace. You know, it's just mm -hmm. extra. And in the winter, it's nice having a fire. Um, yeah. You know, we we have lots of snow. So oh, yes, yes, I've seen nice. photos. Yeah, the, you're not missing much. I'd like to, like, I think I would like to make a snowball once and then not. <laughs> right. <laughs> Does that make sense? Like, I want to experience it. I don't want to live in it. One um, snow angel and you're done. Gosh. Um, oh, it keeps yes. telling us how long it's going to take to print. <laughs> oh, my gosh. She's making her own black sheep. She's very excited. Um, Sally wants to know if the pens are refillable. Absolutely. Um, yep. They, they take a standard, is it Parker, I want to say, refill? Yeah. So, yeah. You can I'm get these on thinking. Amazons. You can get them. I'm thinking it's the same refill I've got in my pen. It might be. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which we can get from, um, uh, if it is the same, we can pick up the refills from, from Officeworks. Sally, just so you know. Um, Nitspin Girl says, what an awesome use of leftovers. Definitely. Um, oh, John O'Brien here. There we go. They use cross refills. Okay, they use cross. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're, uh, wait, I'm just having a look. Someone was asking about shipping. Here we go. Um, oh, no. Freaky is responding to Carol's question of do you do free shipping. Carol, where are you based is probably a good question to throw and we're an international group here i know it's not free shipping to australia no if you're in the states it's free shipping if it's 35 dollars or over yeah and, and that's actually really reasonable 35 dollars or over free shipping you're better than i am you've got to spend 200 off me to get free shipping <laughs> well it, it's an etsy thing oh um, really? etsy's like if you don't offer free shipping over 35 dollars you won't show up in uh, you won't oh. be prioritized in the search so they kind of twisted your arm until it almost broke to do that. Oh so my they did a survey and asked people, do you like free shipping? And of course, I, everybody I like, took the service like, I, like, I love free yes. shipping. So. Oh my 
God. Ah. I, I don't I don't mind it. But then Etsy's solution was just raise your prices for the amount of shipping. So just raise your prices by six dollars domestically. But you realize that I, I wholesale and sell at shows and you know, I just can't oh by the way, everything's five dollars more now. So oh, I, I don't and I don't mind like it's it. It's like just the way it is. It's not like consumers aren't smart. They know, right? Mm, really? Free shipping, is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. All right. Game Widows is six minutes to find out Victoria's lockdown. Australia's just had another little interesting outbreak of the of the virus just in one of our states. So um yeah, here we go. John says, economics degree. There's no such thing as free anything. I used to read these science fiction books when I was younger, and one of the things that would come up in this particular author's books was tan starfle, and, and they would say it, and they would mean it like, sorry, I'm just, my hair's caught in my audio input, and it's driving me up the wall. I'll just fix that. Um, tan starfle. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Um, if something's free, then then you are the cust like then you are the product and that's how I try to describe Facebook and and Instagram and all of those sorts of things it's free to use because you are the product they're selling your information somewhere it's amazing um, how I, I googled a product and all of a sudden it showed up on Facebook the next day how does that work shocking right <laughs> Oh, Kim's like, I could make a dozen mini ones in two hours. Kim is like on the sheep. She is like, I am making sheep. I think mine take uh, 15 minutes each with the info I use on them. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Gosh. Well, yeah. at the the local libraries here, as like once you've done all the inductions and everything, which Kim has done, um, you just pay a certain amount, but they supply everything. So I don't know what kind of infill they're using. Right. Um, so I'm just having a look here. Game Widow says that that was a Etsy shipping thing was a rubbish decision. Game Widow sells on Etsy as well. She t sells on beautiful stitch markers and project bags and spindle bags, funnily enough. Cool. Um, but, yeah. I've been on Etsy since 2008 in one way or another. So I was in there probably in the first year of it starting, and it's changed a lot. Everybody said, oh, they're going public. Well, now the shareholder wants to make money. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not complaining. Etsy's been great to me. I uh, just, uh, um, I have a little over fourteen thousand sales on there. So That's Etsy's been to good to me. At. No, not at so all. So you have Etsy, and do you also have your own website? Correct. Snyderspindles.com. Different stock or does they share stock? They share stock. It's actually a pattern site, so it's actually through Etsy. Okay. So it, it allows people to buy things from me who hate Etsy. <laughs> so they're not realizing they're buying from Etsy because you go to my website. But on the back end, it, it goes through Etsy. I, okay. They give uh, you well, a little it makes bit it easy freedom. for you. You only have to update one, um, yeah. one place for your stock. Yeah. And Etsy's really good about, you know, uh, remitting taxes for sales tax and organizing things. And so yeah. I, I'm, I'm not bad mouthing Etsy at all. It, it, yeah. It, it's just frustrating when they convenient. make some of these decisions sometimes. Yeah, definitely. That affect more than what they think it will affect. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, Rebecca, welcome to the chat running. We're running um, a special live stream here with Scott. We're trialing a new thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know how it's going. How do you guys find that it's going? Are you enjoying this new way? I know I'm a little awkward, so. Oh, me too. It's all good. You're in yeah. good company. Um, Freaky saying, I had to order through Etsy, otherwise I could not make a purchase. I found that odd, but got help via email to spend my money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and Allison says it's a good idea with the website and Etsy. Yeah, it is. It's because it's like as a small business owner, you have to think of the different ways to to help people and to make your sales so that you can afford, you know, stock, food, um, power, heat, <laughs> all these things. Insurance, insurance is fun. Um, but still keep everybody happy because there's always going to be instances where someone's being trod on or they don't or, or people have a particular um 
dislike for a, a platform. Um, and so it's good to, to, it's like that whole, if YouTube shut down tomorrow, would your business still exist kind of argument? And it's right. like, yes, it would. I wouldn't be live streaming, <laughs> but my business would still exist. So yeah. lots of fingers and lots of pies. Yeah. Um, Freaky is harassing Kim in the chat, so that's cool. <laughs> uh, everyone's loving it? Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. Less double entering, um, Alison says, if you've got your website going through the back end of an Etsy store. So, Scott, you make pens and spindles and now binding needles, sheepies. What else do you make? There's something else. My brain's just not telling me what it is. Um, I also make lucettes. Yes, yes. I have one. I think I've got one of your 3D printed ones. Do I have my 3D printed one I can reach? Probably not. No, but that's okay. Yeah, I, I do. Hey, wait a minute. A magical oh, bag. There's just a whole bag right here. Right? <laughs> Who would have guessed? Um, so yeah, so the little handled ones. And I like yeah. the 3D printed ones. They've got a little gift to them. Yeah. So. Yeah. And if you Beautiful. don't like the handle, we make them without handles. I think Heck. I bought one of each because I had no freaking idea what I wanted. Oh, and you got I, Snyder. I, like... I even put my name on there. Look at that. Is that part of your printing process or is that something you do manually? No, that's part of the printing. It prints it in there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Look at that. I don't think mine have that. Probably. I have. I got mine a few years ago. Some of them do, some of them. I have a couple different sizes. So some do, some don't. Um, these have a very have small hole in the center. people asking what they're for. What is a loose set used for? Um, it, it makes a square cord, similar to an I-cord, yeah. except for it's, uh, it's square rather than circular. So it's like, I'm going to say it wrong. Kui Mono does this. That's round cords, isn't it? Yeah. Where it's the big yeah. thing where you're like. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, boy, if I had some yarn. Oh, if you had yarn handy. <laughs> I had yarn laying around. Like, yeah. where's all that frogged pink stuff? Right. Yeah, right here. <laughs> uh, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, Scott has got, a, is it a TikTok out, Scott? Yeah, it's TikTok. A TikTok of Scott like frogging his C to C because he's stuffed up. Oh, like all of us, sometimes we get on a roll and just screw it up and have to. Play I it was out. watching TV, so so here here it is. Oh, hang on, I'll go to the big screen for you so everyone can see. There we go. So, what is it going to be? It's going to be a blanket. Nice. And are you using or up? Like, have you got a particular pattern of colors that you're going with? Yeah, I, I got purple, pink, and I've got pink, purple, and black. I'm just alternating. So yep. Yep. it's just going to be stripies. It, no pattern, not a grafkin or anything. Yeah. So. All right. So we got sidetracked. Yes. Lucette. Lucette. Now I can't you know remember what the history how to start of a Lucette is. Uh, a lot of people say it's a Viking tool. I'm yep. not sure if that's true or not. It doesn't sound like a Viking word. It sounds French. It does sound French. Hmm. So let's see here. I can get this going. Yeah, let's go this way. All yeah, right. I'm going to pop your big screen again so everyone can see what you're doing. Don't feel put on the spot or anything. Right. So you just basically make an X and just You just need to yarn lift over. your hands up a bit higher. There you go. Hey, I know what I can do. Give me a second. Magic. Uh -oh. Magic. Scott's better set up <gasps> for this than I am. Look oh, at my that. God. Hands down, camera. <laughs> Look at that. Amazing. Um, but so you're blocking. Your hand's blocked by your head. There you go. That's better. <laughs> so you just rotate it and go from the bottom to the top. Um, it's, it's the same as spool knitting. Um, oh, okay. Yep. Or the peg, the peg looms, basically the same concept. You're just going over the loop. 
Gosh, Spit Knit Spin Girl says, someone said to me, oh, you're such a good knitter, you wouldn't make mistakes. And she goes, no, no, I make bigger mistakes, just faster. <laughs> right. There's no tinking in my life. It's all frogging. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Cara Moriello is asking, who sells spindle bags? That would be the Gamer Widows. Um, if you go onto the fibereffect.com website, um, there is a page um, called Fibrific Recommends, and it's um, a whole pile of local businesses and people that are, and small businesses that I love, and there's a link in there. Scott's link's also in there, just saying. Right. <laughs> oh, wow. That actually happens quite quickly. Right. Now they got the tension on it. <laughs> the first couple stitches don't look all that great, but... There we go. Yeah. Okay. And what would you, what do you use it for? Um, I'll use it for like ties on hats. Okay. Um, and anything you'd use I cord for, really. Yeah. Awesome. Um, you can make bracelets for your friends. I don't have any <laughs> friends. Friends are overrated. That's very true. I've got lots of friends. I just don't know any of them. Oh, <laughs> I'm just teasing, guys. I'm teasing. I've got lots of friends too. Yeah. Wow. Thank you, Scott. Like we've just like you plan the fly for us. Use a loose set for us. <laughs> right. <laughs> Was this what you expected when I said, Hey Scott, do you want to jump in and join me for a live stream? I, I thought it was gonna be crocheting. So yeah, I, I think it's not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we do so much here. Uh, we've had the, we've had a discussion um, in the chat before. I was like, "Are you guys upset that I don't just focus on one craft and that I'm like spinning one week and crocheting another week and knitting one week or dyeing or something or just like sometimes I'm pricing stock, you know? <laughs> so like right. it's like I'm sorry, guys. I have got a job that needs to be done and I am out of time." Um, yeah, so it's – and the resounding – that like everyone just says the same thing. We are all multi-craftual. We right. all have more than one craft we're interested in. If you like yarn, you like yarn. Right, <laughs> definitely. So, you know. oh, and, and crickets, also crickets. We love – I have done a bit of cricketing. Do you know what a cricket is, Scott? Uh, I don't have a cricket. Uh-oh. I'm scared. Is anybody else scared? <laughs> Scott's just. <laughs> I've got a brother scan and cut. You've got the scan and cut. Nice job. It's got a scanner built into it. it, it they're handy. They are handy. I, it was a tough call for me, but I went with the Cricut Maker because it, it did um, what I needed it to do and I could get one pretty easily. In retrospect, I would have got a Cricut, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, why do you say that? Um, just because the mats are readily available everywhere. Like yes. this mat, I would have to order online. It didn't stay tacky long enough for me. And they're like 20 bucks a pop. So, yeah. Yeah. But other than that, I like it. Yeah. And, and that's the thing, like with the cricket, the, the, we joke that like you buy the $600, like in Australia, they're 600 or $650. And um, you buy the machine, it's like, that's great. Now you need to go and spend another 600 bucks on blades and mats and vinyl. That's the other store. I can't be trusted in a vinyl store. I'm just like, hello. <laughs> My local vinyl dealer, and I think of it like that, just had this massive crazy sale. And I was like, oh, oh, look, I shall just have 10 meters of the fiberific blurple color. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So it's just become this massive like roll because it's 500 mil wide, 10 meters long, <laughs> just one color. Oh my gosh! Um, John is sitting next to his crochet this week. I'm just there. We go. Um, John, is your crochet in timeout, or is there a particular reason why you're sitting next to it? Um, Chaos creator, who is Kim, she is my cricketing guru who I go to for all my cricketing information. She's taught me everything I know on cricket, um, even all the bad habits. Um, but she says crickets have um, more blades and more blade options. Could be. Yeah. Um, I'm just having a, a, a quick read through. Knit Spin Girl says that she likes to see all of the things. 
that's the thing. And that's the thing, like, when you're creative, you're creative. Like, I can't draw to save myself. I'm the shame of my artistic family. Um, but my dad has always said, because he's insane, he sculpts and draws and paints. And he's always said to me, but, you know, if there's ever anything, like, ap apocalyptic, I'm coming to your place because you can knit, sew, spin, weave, grow food, make food. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, Dad, like it's all about the food, isn't it? He goes, and jumpers. <laughs> there you go. So, oh, my gosh. Uh, here we go. Um, John's got a question. What do you have for your 3D printers? I've got an MP Select Mini, but I'm thinking of getting on the list for a Prusa. Mm -hmm. I've said that wrong, I'm sure. Actually, you said that fine. Um, I have two Ultimaker 2s that I've had for about five years now. These things are workhorses. They're my good printers. And then I have four Sculpto printers that I bought at a closeout at uh, Joanne Fabrics, fabric store here. Uh, they were closing them out for $100 each. Um, Is that not... I have no idea. Uh, the Ultimakers are uh, $2,500 each. Wow. Um, where these were 500 and then they, they got rid of them at $100. They're not great printers, but they're really good at making sheep. So anything that I'm selling that's not a sheep, like uh, <laughs> these, these little twist keepers for your spinning wheel. Oh, they're adorable. So, so you, just, you just hook them on and then it keeps a twist coming around your flyer yeah. and then on the end. Like these are on the Ultimakers, the cheap, Sculpto printers, sheep. So okay. Well, I mean, they have a purpose, and you need yeah, a lot of I sheep. Mean, yeah. And oh, uh, Prusa makes a great printer. Um, you know, uh, nothing as mono price, but yeah, the Prusa Mini it actually, depending on how much volume you want, seems to be a really good deal. So. Yeah. Well, there you go, John. Yeah. Um. I Allison says that cricket supply collecting is just as addictive as as um, yarn collecting. Agreed. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, says so Chantelle, who can, like, her cricket, my cricket's right here. I can touch it. You can't see me. I'm touching it right now. Um, and I normally keep, this is my work desk, right? And so I normally keep it with monitor, laptop, camera gear, and that's it, and, and mouse. And I try and keep it clear so that when I'm doing live streams or when I'm packing orders, I've got an empty space. Cricket came in. I'm like, that's going on the end of this table. <laughs> so I could, it could go somewhere else. No, no, it's fine here. <laughs> it's good, right where I had it. Um, where if you had the silhouette camo, um, plus it cuts 15 inches wide. I think I missed maybe a, a, a half of that question. Um Leanne has got one here, but my mouse is is being a poopy pants. Stop being a butt face. There we go. Smashing crafts together like sewing and crocheting in your Star Wars infusion blanket. That's the thing, isn't it? Like once you've learnt a few crafts, you can magically make them go together. Definitely. So that's a bit of fun. John can't snark in chat and crochet at the same time. Fair call, John. Fair call. I mean, you could, but you'd be, you know, pulling a Scott and frogging it later. Um, oh, Game Widow's got the news. Game is, is, lives in Melbourne, so they've just found out they're in a seven-day lockdown from, from midnight. Exciting. Exciting. Go to the shop. No, don't go to the shop. God, that would be a mess. Um, where are we? I'm just having... did, did you guys have issues with people hoarding toilet paper? Yeah. Or was that an America thing? No. That's a human thing. It was toilet paper and pasta. Like you couldn't get either. I don't like really. And like I'm oh, I already have a problem with toilet paper, right? Like growing up how I grew up, I'm like, if we open a new packet, like it's eight double length rolls, right? <laughs> If I open a new packet, that's it. I don't have a packet, so I have to go and buy a new one. I would be down to the second last roll. I am freaking out. My husband's like, ah, oh, you've got days. Don't even worry. I'm like, no, we need it. 
the house. You don't understand. There's not a spare packet in the house anywhere. <laughs> he was just like, this is a really big issue for you now, isn't it? I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, yeah. And then one day he's come back and he's like, I couldn't get toilet paper. And I'm just like, you got tissues then? He's like, I couldn't get anything. And I'm like, well, then, these these two rolls are going into my bathroom. You get none. And just gave him some newspaper. <laughs> but, yeah, no, it was a definite thing here. It was insane. It was insane. And fighting in the in the shopping aisles, like, I'm sorry. Like, yeah, I am a freak when it comes to, neat, like, hoarding toilet paper, but that's been my whole life. It's not just been for this. And by hoarding, I like to have a whole unopened packet, like one. And it's eight rolls. It's not 50 rolls or something. Um, so while it's an issue, it's there's worse issues. Um, <laughs> and But even then, I wouldn't fight somebody for toilet paper. Right. I'd be like, oh, well, and move on. You know, like, oh, crap, what am I going to do? Uh, and that would be it. It wouldn't be like, well, I'm going to go and bash that lady over there because she's got two packets in her trolley. Right. Like, oh, my God. I'm just having a look here. Kim's talking about Costco. Um, Carol says, I need to watch your cricket classes. Bought one, never used it. Carol, I don't do cricket classes. I just use my cricket i'm i'm not a teacher for cricket i'm more like a why won't this thing work poke 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 kind of person yeah it worked no idea why um, i i'm i'm not a qualified teacher are you right louis there is somebody walking in our yard isn't there that's okay it'll just be the amazon delivery guy <laughs> He's probably knocking on the door. Um, Scott, I'm going to leave you to chat for a second while I um, run off. Is that okay? That's fine. All right. Hang on because otherwise the dog's going to bark and I'm trying to make my mouse work to make you big. There you go. All right. Welcome to uh, the big pile of towels back there. <laughs> um, those are actually... Um, so I used a mineral oil finish on the spindles. So I dip them in mineral oil, set them on uh, racks to drip dry, wrap them in the towels, and then I, I can dry them off from there. So that's what that's all about. So I can see the chat, chaos. So I don't know. Do you want to see some stamps I made? Yeah. So we're talking about, you know, doing crafts that we wind up never doing. So um, if you get a laser engraver, so what craft got me started? Not sure. Um, I've been a woodworker as long as I can remember. Um, I'm um, back. My mom taught me how to crochet when I was young. So... so. How cool is that? So if, if you do get a laser engraver, you can make your own stamps. So Oh, that's nice. Is that neat? Yeah. So and then I did the IKEA Turkish spindle. So you got that uh <laughs> the one over here. There you go. The kind oh. of where yeah, am I going that's here? Side on view. Yeah. yeah. I'm so. not sure if you've been asked this already, Scott, or if you saw this, but um, what craft got you started? Yeah, it, it was definitely woodworking growing up. Um, I was always in uh, the woodworking classes in like uh, the 4-H and uh, in school. I was a, I was a guy in uh, the woodworking and metals classes. So, do you, do you actually buy a special uh, laser engravable rubber? For these so so that's all that's all the laser engraver it's cool wow. it's one of those things where you know I, I made a few and that was about it so some, sometimes you start crafts and they're awesome and then you never get around to doing them again yeah 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 
Definitely get that. Thank you for jumping in. Sorry. Because sometimes no the couriers leave it and sometimes they don't. And I don't like dealing with the whole I have to go to the post office thing when I don't want to. <laughs> oh, this mouse is playing up. I changed its battery yesterday. There we go. Exit solar. Have it ever engraved leather? I have, and, and it works fine. You just have to make sure it's real leather. Um, you don't ever want to laser engrave anything that has PVC in it. Um, oh, I can imagine that would not be good. It, it makes a, is it chlorine gas, honey? Oh, oh, it's it'll kill you. It could kill you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's probably that's a good reason not, not to do good. it. It'll just kill you. <laughs> right. You know, the laser engraver gets vented outside, but yeah. um, yeah, anything with vinyl in it, it's horrible on the inside of the machine coating things. So as long as it's real leather, it's fine. Yeah. So oh, cool. there's some things you just don't put in a laser engraver. Yeah. Yeah. So Pumpkin I pies. Get... Perfect. You can laser engrave pies if you want to. But... Well, my question is why? Because you can put like, you can put a turkey on your pumpkin pie. We have Thanksgiving here. I, I know you guys don't have it there, but. That's right. We watch lots of American shows. We used to right, 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 right. Yeah. I just, I'm just visualizing you putting a pie into your laser graver because you just want to put a turkey on the pie. Yep. You can do this sugar is... cookies and stuff, but they don't taste as good. There. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. That's insane. I mean, it's it's like amazingly insane. It's like my brain is blown. Freaky Geek says he would put a pumpkin on the pumpkin pie. That would work. Bob has missed the last couple of lives and she has made it today. Hey, Bob. I'm so glad you could make it today. Um, Kim's asking a question here. Um, oh, no, that's Bob again. Hang on. There it is. Um, you need to be careful about how the leather has been treated or dyed. Is yep. Does that make a difference as well? Yep. Yeah. Oh, uh, you, Kim's, you never... Kim's wish list is a Glowforge, right? So she watches lots of Glowforge videos. Yeah. I would not engraving a marshmallow melt the marshmallow. No, no, it wouldn't. It's like, uh, it's like what, 5,000 degrees at the point when it's hitting the material. It vaporizes the, the material it's hitting. So, okay. And yeah. yeah, you have to be very careful about fires. Um, yeah. Well, you have an I... air assist. That blows the dust away. That kind of puts out the fires. So, just puts out the fires. So yeah, yeah. it doesn't yeah. sound stressful at all. No. <laughs> um, this is the number one thing about owning a laser engraver. You keep one of these around. Yeah. 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 Definitely. I keep one out the back near where I do my dyeing. Um. Not that I have any open flame, but I do have lots of electricity flowing with water. Yeah. So the chances are more likely to be electrocuted than caught on fire. But if I'm not watching and there's something near something that's sparking, then it could cause a fire. Um, but I've been doing it a long time so far. Knock wood. I have no wood handy. Great. I got tons. Yeah. Um. Yeah, knock wood. Uh, I haven't had to use it yet. I probably should buy a new one, really. Um, Lindsay says, well, the possibilities for la laser engraving are just mind-blowing. Yes, they are. They definitely are. And it's, it's, it's like a lot of things. Like you wouldn't think of, like I never put laser engraving and food together in the same sentence. And I would never have put laser, um, like laser engraving and, yarn craft together until I started watching what you were doing um, and because you're making these amazing tools and just making them so meaningful, so personalized for people. Um, you can cut felt, but I would not cut wool felt. There's a reason we don't light sheep on fire. It smells really, really bad. I bet. <laughs> uh, uh, no. Let's, it's a hard no from me. Um, I know they're tricky, but would you ever make tatting shuttles? Nah, probably not. I just don't have time right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
So I mean, you've got 11 billion types of spindles that you have in the various sizes and shapes and timbers and what have you. Um, what is your top seller? If I can ask that question, otherwise you can tell me to mind my own business. What's the most popular thing that you sell, you know, other than the sheep? Right. Um, I would ask, Vicky, what's the most popular item we sell? Yeah, what do you think we sold the most of? Probably standards, Turkish. She's thinking. As far as the top roll goes, probably the classic gear spindle. Yeah, that's um, sort of like the one that you did with your, your personalized etching. Yeah, I got one right here. Woo! As I'm dropping stuff on the floor. So th this is a classic. Oh, they're beautiful. I don't have one of those. So, you know, but I've also been selling these the longest. So yeah. that might have something to do with it. But yeah, I would say that um, probably the standard or um, maybe the full-size glider. You don't have to look. I mean, I don't know. I mean, honestly, if you're, if you're talking, uh, talking number-wise, I mean. Yeah. So I, I I think that's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I need you to pull out your tax records and give me an exact no, no. Right. <laughs> I'll open up my books on stream. I'm just gonna have to figure out how to do the display. <laughs> so good. Right. So good. I was just wondering um, if you noticed that you'd made more of any one thing than others. Right. So good. Uh, the the little twist keepers that the no the wraps for inch gauges. How many did we sell? Over a thousand of them. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. And are they hard to make or are they a nice, easy thing? They're they're all laser engraving, so they're nice and okay. easy. You just got to sit here and make sure the laser graver doesn't burst into the flames. So it's more monitoring that, you yeah. know, the catch fires. Yeah. Lindsay has a question. Why do some drop spindles have the little hook on the bottom? <laughs> so it's like it's between a top well and a bottom well. Yeah. So top wells tend to have hooks on. And... Uh, so you just wrap around the hook just to support it, to hold on to the yarn for spinning. And then the Turkish don't have a hook on them. Most of them don't. Uh, the biggest problem with the hook on is when you go to take it apart, you're going to bring it through. Yeah, and that hook's going to catch on everything. Yeah. Unless you're from New Zealand and you start with an A, then you'll have a hook. But uh, most of them don't. So you come up and you put a half hitch in. And a half hitch yeah. is really easy. You just go over your finger, tuck through, and pull. And that's enough to yeah. hold on to it. Because I think so. more often than not, that's all you really need is the good little, um, the little, look, come on, camera. Like, don't look at my face. It wants to focus. There we go. <laughs> yeah, the little uh, finial on the top. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that makes the world a difference. A good one of those, like it has a nice hard edge on it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of makers don't give it a good like delineated line. Like it's with yours, it's very much a like a it's been cut in and then shaped. Yeah. Um, or or maybe shaped and then cut in, but they they shape it, but then they smooth it all the way down. And then you you can't use it as something to hold your loop because there's nowhere for the edge of the yarn to not slip past yeah i mean if you don't have a finial on the top you can put two half fishes in like that on yeah. it yeah but that's a pain in the tuckus so yeah you're like getting it undone and it, yeah. it messes with your flow but some spindles are bottom well spindles oh no mm -hmm. that just moves the well this why would the hook be on the bottom Maybe this might sound ridiculous. Have you got a hook on the top and the bottom, or is it maybe you just spindle needs to be turned the other way? Well, if yeah, if you had a lower, the hook would be technically yeah, on the top your, of the spindle. The, your hook would still be on the top of the spindle, even if you had right. a, um, a bottom well. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I don't know how to answer that one, Lindsay. Come on, little mouse, you can do it. Hide. Um, Sally's asking, do people sometimes just get these because they're beautiful? I know I probably would. Um, if you get the smaller ones, they look great on uh, Christmas trees um, or uh, as decoration. Yeah. Put it in a cubicle. <laughs> set it <laughs> just down. Just sit it on something. You know. Um, um, uh, it's covered up. But, the, boy, that's, it just looks fancy just setting them down. 
It does. They look adorable. And like all of my spindles have something on them. Like there's some fluff somewhere. Otherwise it'd be cold. That's exactly, exactly yeah. right. And who wants to facilitate cold spindles? Right. Which monster in the chat <laughs> is facilitating cold spindles? Come on, mouse. There we go. Um, Carol was asking a question. What crochet stitch did you on your work? I'm not. Did I miss something? Is that something you guys discussed while I was running out dealing with Korea? No. Or? If that's for me, um, I don't know. It's just corner to corner, corner, corner. is what Trevor. chain three and then three trouble. Yeah. Oh. We have Scott has stopped moving, but I don't know if it's Scott who stopped moving. Oh, there he goes. Was that you or me, Scott? I think it was me. I started swirling, but I, I came oh, back. Oh, okay. All right. Um, Lindsay says, no, I was confused. I didn't know what was at the top. Oh, okay. My mouse is not working. It's driving me up the wall. I'm going to turn it off and back on again. Yeah. Which means that Carol's message has to stay up there a little bit longer until I can get it down. No touch screen here. All right. Okay. Um, <laughs> Miss Spin Girls, I suck at spindle spinning. Doesn't stop me from buying them. <laughs> Works for me. You know, spindle I, spinning is spinning. It's all drafting. It is. Yeah. And and I think of spindles like spinning lollies. You can just keep buying them and collect them. You don't have to eat them. <laughs> if you buy a special fiber that's just awesome and expensive and beautiful, you want to enjoy it as long as possible. So yeah, I, I'd probably not this, put it on the wheel. I've got this beautiful little um, uh, container. It actually came in a clear plastic square box, and it's a blend of. Um, Oh, my brain is not telling me Fucano. No, it's like a Peruvian llama ish shape animal, but bigger. Um, anyway, very expensive, very expensive fiber. And I've just got this little, like, 25 gram box that cost me $60. And it just sits there in the bookshelf sealed. <laughs> and every now and again, I open it and touch it and then close it. <laughs> But yeah, I awesome. have a spindle next to that. Like one day I will marry. It's a nude spindle on a bookshelf. So freaky, you're not alone. Um, <laughs> it's got no clothing on his spindles. Monster. Um, yeah. Freaky's picking on me with the mouse. Um, oh, here we go. Game widows. Unless you're me who speeds through fiber and goes looking for more. I spindle very slowly and because it's like I'm not Vicuna, that's it, that's it, knit spin girl, thank you. Um it is that that's the one. <laughs> um I spindle very slowly and it's because A, I don't get much time to do it, and B, I'm doing it for me. So in my brain, it's like it has to be sidelined and put to the back until after I've done all these other things. Um, because it's just for me. It's not work. It doesn't help the family. It's just for me. And that's an that's an that's an attitude that I need to get rid of. That's a dumb attitude. Um I'm trying to find where this is so I can there it is. Um move that one down. Allison, I think, yeah, I picked mine up from Bendigo a couple of years back as well. So there was one of the sellers there who had some on their stall. Very pretty, beautiful blend had to have it so one day scott's going to come to bendigo um and bring a couple of spindles couple of hundred and <laughs> me going through customs i don't they're for me right well you could just ship them to me uh you know big box it's like what spindles i didn't know i was bringing spindles with me down to bendigo to meet you here <laughs> i just came yeah, for the drop don't ship them to me. Maybe don't ship them to me. <laughs> Apparently, I'm not reliable. <laughs> <laughs> they never made it, Scott. They never made it. They didn't I see the box land. right there. <laughs> no, that's a different box. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is insane. But yes, no, we've got we've got lots of events coming up here, um, 
And with like this most recent um, outbreak, some of them are being thrown in the air. And right. it was just like, ah, oh. Game Widow says, I'm closer to Bendigo, send them to me. Same problem, different person. Right, right. <laughs> they just um, will not make it. Yeah, things are starting to open up here. I think uh, we're scheduled to do four live shows this year. So, nice. Yeah, we'll okay, see. Okay, because your winter, do, do, you, do you do your events in winter or are they more autumn? Um, they're, they're more fall. Yeah, more autumn. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because we do ours in like the depth of winter. So I go down to Victoria, which is one of our colder states. And it's still not snowing where I go. Um, there are areas that do get snow, but that's not where I'm going because it's the land's too low. It's not high enough to get the snowfall. But, um, yeah, it is definitely cold, at least for this subtropical Queenslander, um, but not like, you know, Wisconsin winter cold. Right. <laughs> We, we tend to do one show in South Carolina in February. Of, yeah. of, it was canceled last year, but it's nice because we go from the snow to, you know, t-shirt weather, you know, maybe oh, a sweatshirt. So yeah. get away from the snow for a week. Oh, go back home. That sounds and, good. Yeah. John says the depth of winter, winter in Australia. Uh-huh. <laughs> John, there's some cold spots here. I just don't live in any of them. That's all. Um, I'm being asked if do I think they'll cancel Bendigo? Is Bendigo in danger? I have no idea. Honestly, I don't know what they're thinking. Um, and if they do cancel it, they'll let us know. But it's still another month and a bit away. It's still, I want to say, six weeks, six weeks away. Um, so, you know, fingers crossed. Um, Alison says, I've only just booked accommodation and bought some tickets, so I hope they don't cancel. Me too. Me too. Um, I've got, I'm driving through two states. So my concern with it is if I can get there, will I be able to come back? Because we do that. We've been locking down state borders here in Australia. So you may, you may make it into a state because you haven't been in a hot spot, but they may not let you back in. Like it's a one way. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. you went where the sick people are enjoy it there because you can't come home until you've been not near the sick people for two weeks so it's like oh i'll just drive around for two weeks <laughs> around this state um where are we uh seven weeks chaos creator says yeah so that's plenty of time for them to get this all sorted out um i think carol is, might be a bit behind in, in the in the in the stream because she's what you showed earlier. I'm thinking she's responding to us asking which stitch Carol was asking about. Um, so yeah, um, border closures is a real risk, and don't bring the cooties home. <laughs> okay, that's all I'll say to that. But yeah, border closures are a real risk. And I'm driving, so that makes it a bit easier. But if Kim's got to fly and they will sometimes be okay, like hard, they do a hard border close. And if you fly into a state, you have to hotel quarantine for two weeks at your own expense. Whew. Yeah, I think that it's got a set rate. I think it's like $2,500 per person. And that includes your basic meals. Um, but it's not optional. So... Even if you like, but I, my house, I can see my house. It's just right there. I would stay there for two weeks. They're like, nope, we'll drive you over here on a bus to this other hotel and you can stay there. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Bub Curran says, my power and my internet are playing up. I have to catch the rerun. That is a real thing. So I don't know if you know about this, Scott. I live in Queensland, Australia, and... In central Queensland, which, well, not central, but like northern Queensland, one of our coal-fired energy, uh, this, what are they called? It's basically one of the places where they burn the coal to make the electricity. The power plant, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, yes. So one of those, um, it has four generators. One of the generators exploded. Um, 
the southeast corner of Queensland, 375,000 homes lost power wow. from a power plant that's 400 kilometres away. Um, and so um, they're talking about rolling out power outages. And if you live closer to them, then you're definitely, which Bub does, you are definitely more likely to be getting these power outages. But we were having these discussions like in our local group um, like our local regional group, we're talking about how one street would have power and then the next street just wouldn't. Like we, I had power here and I was just like, I've opened up Facebook and I'm like, I'm like, what? <laughs> and, yeah, there was like, you know, one main street in Beanley had no power but the cross street, George did. And there was no rhyme or reason as to why different sections of the grid had power. Um, or not had power from a power station 400 kilometres away. We have one closer. It right. just shows that, like, these power, like, we're all really um, reliant. Because <laughs> my husband's, like, rung and he was just like, uh, I mean, I'd like to come home, but I don't know if it's safe on the roads because there's no street lights. Like, as right. in no stop, you know, red lights and green lights kind of street lights. None of those had power either. And there were accidents and people just not giving way properly. And, you know, yeah. it's just like, oh, <laughs> oh, wow. Imagine what's going to happen if something worse happened. Like a global pandemic? Oh, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, oh, my gosh. Right. But, yeah, so so we've had that kind of um, happening this week here as well. Oh. Carol is talking about bison. We got some bison near Rhinebeck need to wash it so soft. Have you spun Rhine, uh, Rhinebeck? Have you spun bison before? Have I? Yeah. No. I've had mux, mu, muskox. Yep, I've done kivet. muskox. Yep. Yeah. I actually got kivet from a, um, somebody from Australia sent me some fiber and it has some kivet in it. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So oh, and they bought some to eat as well. That nice. sounds like um what's his name? He has the bison farm where they sell all the hats and the gloves and ah oh, I can't think of his name. He's gonna kill me. I can't remember it. Sorry, there's a dude who goes to Rhinebeck who sells bison because he has a bison farm and he grows them for fiber and for meat, which blew my mind. I was just like, I get the fiber. There's a lot of meat on a bison. There's a lot of meat on a bison. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah, um, I haven't been to Rhinebeck for three years now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I've been there three times. So it's a good show. It, it's look I've only seen photos and like little you know if someone has a video of it and it looks phenomenal it looks enormous is it as big as it looks it is it's insanely okay. big um you know I'm always in a booth so I, I don't get to enjoy the splendor of it but when yeah. you walk through in the morning it's pretty impressive wow yeah. It's definitely it's definitely on my bucket list of fiber events. If you could choose your top three U.S. fiber events, um, what would they be? Wisconsin Sheep and Wool would be number one. It's my yeah. hometown show. It's you yeah. know an hour away or whatever. Um, I I really like Maryland Sheep and Wool. Um, it's a beautiful show. Um, yeah. uh, Rhinebeck is right up there, but I think I have to go with SAF. Which is in? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Is that North Carolina, Saf, honey? We're vending there. That's our first year this year. Oh uh, wow. But I've been there. I've been there previous years, and uh, it's not a huge show, but it's just got a really good vibe to it. Yeah. So. Sorry, Louis snored. <laughs> so primarily, I've been on the East Coast. I haven't been anywhere on the West Coast yet. Yeah. Or like Colorado or anything. I haven't been there yet. So. Okay. Cool. Well, they sound fun. I've I've seen some stuff on SAF, but I haven't seen anything on the other two. But I definitely um, get the appeal of doing something with your local um, community. So Maryland Cheap and Wool isn't too far away from uh, 
Woodstock, New York. Yeah. Um, and they have a lot of tents in the expo buildings. And if it rains, it becomes a big mud pit, which sounds awful, yeah. but it's awesome. So. No, it sounds awful. <laughs> it, it, it's great. Like what it's happens in the mud pit? <laughs> it, it, you, you just have to walk through mud to get into tents everywhere. Oh, gosh, that sounds like Bendigo, actually. Yeah. Some years of Bendigo, when it's raining, it is like you, they don't have tents. They've got all big permanent structures. They may as well be tents. Let's just go with that. They're as warm. Um, like it's two degrees outside in the sun, but you're inside a, a, a big, massive tin shed that has got paving floor and you actually have to cover your stock at night because it gets condensation dripping on it because it's, it's not sealed in any shape fashion like it's air like like it's cold in the sheds it's cold um east coast representing from john boop, boop. um carol's asking if you've done any virtual shows um, we did a couple virtual shows um, early on in the pandemic, and uh, we we have Etsy, and Etsy seems to do just fine for us. So, yeah, uh, virtual stores. There's a lot of hype and a lot of getting everything organized and trying to get everybody's uh, email addresses and real addresses and payment information and everything. Yeah, just wasn't for us. So yeah, yeah. We did, um, I did a, because I've got the Fiberific website, but last year Bendigo didn't happen. Um, and um, a really talented and amazing lady, Danielle Larson, she put together very quickly um, the Big Wool Show, uh, which was a virtual event. It was pretty inexpensive to be a part of. And she set up a website that basically had um, like different tiers of, of cost you got more obviously um but even a basic like the bottom of the line um which was like twenty dollars um got you a thumbnail sized image of your logo as well as a couple of photos and everything linked back to your website so it was like a, everyone's coming here because it's the big wool show and you can go through all the different vendors but when it came time to like, oh, that yarn looks fantastic. Click on that. You go through to your own website to take payment and everything. So it could all go still go through your normal online ordering processes. Right. And that was that was controversial for some people because they felt left out because they didn't have any online presence. They didn't have an Etsy store or their own store or something like that. And there were some people that go to Bendigo that would have liked to have been involved, but they're like, I don't have a website that sells like that. So you're basically ruling me out. And it's just like, well, we have to rule out somewhere we aren't taking payments here. Right. And so it's really hard, especially with virtual events, to make everybody happy. Right. But I thought that was actually a pretty cool way to do it. Um, it did rule some people out, sure. But, yeah, it was definitely, um, it was definitely fun. And we're doing it again this year, but we're not doing it in July because Bendy goes in July. We're doing it in September. So it's going to become its own thing now. It's still oh, virtual. Nice. Um, and it's going to happen at least for one more year to see if it's still good. Like last year it worked because there was no events. Right. Um, we don't know if it'll work still as events are starting to, you know, come back. Um, right. So, yeah, I'm just um, – Chaos Creator is wondering – do you ever do any sort of factory-ish tours? Um, I, I'm working out of a 10 by 10 shed outside, 10 feet by 10 feet. So, And then we're working out of a bedroom, which is 8 feet by 10 feet. So, so no, no. That's a hard no. <laughs> yeah. We're, 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 stay, we're purposely staying small now. Um, when the kid gets done with high school, we plan on moving to a warmer yeah. climate. And once we move, then we're going to actually get a, a bigger shop. And, and then yeah. expand and yeah do do bigger better other things so because your original move into a bedroom was out of necessity during winter one year wasn't it it was just i yeah um it, it's so hard because you know i'm so fahrenheit in my mind not not celsius oh, it's okay it's all right we all convert so you get negative you know 10 below 17 below 
there's no way you're going outside. I have a little electric heater on the ceiling and uh, the machines wouldn't start up. He would plug oh in, gosh. let the heater run for an hour and you go to turn on a uh, piece of equipment with the motor and it just hums. It's yeah. that cold. So. Oh my gosh. Um, the easiest way to move into the house was I had a uh, Vicky start working with me full time. Yeah. So there's no way she was going to go out there. So yeah. 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 So you needed, I was like, well, Vicky, <laughs> we need this room. <laughs> Cause yeah. I, I remember when you were first um, doing it and there was a, I don't know if it was a live stream or if it was a post or something, cause it was a little while ago now. And you were having problems with whether the floor could take the equipment, yeah. like the actual weight of the equipment and your f actual floor of the room. Yeah, we're, we're okay. Uh, you're all good? There's no we're, holes in the floor? We're, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I've replaced some of the floor in here. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just well, part of life. Sometimes we just have to do that. Um, Kim's saying that you could just be part of the big wall show. So, yeah. yeah. So, so John's jumped in with the conversion. Minus 17 Fahrenheit is minus 22. So the only things that hit minus 20 in Queensland are ice cream companies' freezers. Right. So, and my Liquid brother nitrogen, worked there. Yeah. And you weren't allowed in there without the special gear on at all. And even in the special gear, you aren't allowed in there for longer than 30 minutes at a go. So 30 minutes in, five minutes out, 30 minutes back in again. It, it gets cold enough here where if you take warm water and throw it in the air, it'll turn into like ice in the air. So you throw up okay. water and it lands as ice. It turns into wow. like snow. I would love to see that I, and then get in my car and leave. Uh, <laughs> right. Just because it's just like, or, or, you know, walk back into my very warm building. When it gets that cold, it's it's weird. It's it's silent. There's like it would no be. noise. It, no it's, bugs, it's creepy. no birds. Nothing. Gosh. Yep. You're near wow. Woodstock. Yeah, Matt Ryback. Yeah. Gosh. I, I was I was thinking uh just the mud pit that Woodstock was in the in '69. I think that's what it was. Yep. You're right, Carol. Kim's telling us, telling you to TikTok it for us. So when winter hits, oh, definitely, that yeah, be, that would be an awesome TikTok. So chuck some food coloring in the water so we can see it, right? And then just oh, whoosh, that'd be amazing. Oh yeah, here we go. Russian prototype is is in the chat. Um, we were chatting, Jürgen and I were chatting in Clubhouse about live streaming. And about the different ways to do live streaming and how I'm very naughty and actually losing a massive opportunity in that I don't cut my live streams down and re-upload little snippets for people to catch, which he's right. I am totally like dropping the ball. But welcome to the chat, uh, Jürgen, Russian prototype. Um, you need to take a quick trip to the New South Wales mountains. No, I don't. I really don't. <laughs> Um, you need boots either way if you want to go into the barns, says Carol. I'm assuming that's for Rhinebeck. Is that, is that right, Scott? Yeah. Gosh. Wow. So we've been going for nearly two hours, you guys, and, and with this new setup, with Scott joining us, answering all the questions about Snyder Spindles. Um, we haven't put him on the spot at all about anything, like yeah. show us how to do a thing. Show us how to do the other thing. Right. <laughs> Scott, is there anything that you have going at the moment that you definitely want us to know about and that we haven't touched on, or even if we have and you want us to remember? Um, spin fast so you can die warm. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. That's so yeah. awesome. Yeah. Oh, um, wow. yeah. Buy local when you can. If you can't, buy from me. Yeah, that, I like that too. And, yeah. and that's what I like to do as well. If I can buy local, I will. But here in Australia, there's a lot of things we can't get, or at least not not good. Um, and if I want a spindle, and especially Turkish spindles, um, Scott's who I always go to, 
always now. I don't even think about it. It's just like, I need a new spindle. <laughs> what colour should I choose? <laughs> and that's, that's about it. Um, did he answer his biggest maid spindle? Oh, I don't know if he did, Freaky. Um, the, the, the largest one? Yeah, what's the largest spindle you've made? Um, it would be the plying spindles. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. And so you said you can fit about four ounces onto your um, the, the the normal, like that one, your giant one that you've got going there. Right. How much can you fit onto a plying spindle? Um, I got nine, a little over nine ounces. Um, I stopped. I weighed it, and... I thought I had 10 ounces. Um, you know, you can get quite a bit on there. Um, wow. Once again, I don't know what 10 ounces is. Hang on. That's all right. That's 283 grams. Yes. There we so go. Most of our yarn comes in 100 gram lots. <laughs> right. So nearly three times that amount. That's fantastic. We're getting lots of comments in here. She who dies with the most toys wins. Um, spin fast, die warm needs to be on a T-shirt. I could totally cricket the crap right out of that. Right. Um, where is it? She who dies with the biggest stash wins. Uh, Freaky may have left the computer. Well, well, then, Freaky, you're just going to have to come back for the replay. That's all I can say about that. Um. <laughs> the real winner is the person who dies with the most works in progress. The most. Oh, that'd be me. That's give me. To, to give to somebody else. Hey, you got to finish this for me. They oh really gosh, win. It's totally me because I'm a process crafter. I just want to do the thing. I don't want to make a thing. I just want to do it. Um, I don't even know. Many years ago, I made a YouTube video about how many whips I had, and it was embarrassing because I stopped counting at 22. And I was just like, okay. And that didn't include any of my spinning projects. And I was just like, uh, right. I don't believe I've done finished any of those. I think I may have frogged a couple of them because, like, oh, well, I'm never going back to that and frog it, but I've never actually... Um, I don't think I finished any of them either. Um, Car Carol's asking, Christy Glass has done a few virtual events called Knit and Escape. I don't know what that is. Have you heard of that before? No, I have not. There you go. It might be something worth looking into if that's your cup of tea. Oh, here we go. John. John with the pessimism. <laughs> I'm going to win. Mean, that's, a, that's a bit too close for comfort there, John. Right. Um, Tali wants to know if that number has changed since then. I don't know. I mean, that would mean I would need to go in and count things and find them and judge if they're, they're whips or UFOs. Um, that's not happening. <laughs> uh, Leanne, so the highly rate recommendations or reviews from friends, likes and loves too, on just about everything. It's my favourite way to shop. It's a good way to shop, I think. Definitely. Because you can trust your friends. They're not, they're not, like I look at, <laughs> what always comes to mind is, do you, do you watch any tech YouTubers, um, Scott? Sure. Yeah. yeah. So I, I watch this one tech, well, I've watched a lot of tech YouTubers, but I, there's one in particular, John Prosser from Front Page Tech. His stuff is hilariously funny. And he quite often gets demonetized because of how he does his tech reviews and how he talks. But he always gets, like, top-notch knowledge early. And so he's worth watching. But his stuff is really funny. But he's always got a sponsored video because that way he guarantees that their business makes money even when YouTube demonetizes them. Well, his sponsorships have always been tech, 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 and it's been fantastic. And it matches his branding and everything. One day he starts the video walking past vacuuming. <laughs> he got a Dyson deal. Nice. <laughs> and he it was just like, we all vacuum, right? I might be a tech tuber, but I still vacuum. And then and then he did his spiel for this Dyson vacuum. And it was so weird because it was just like, I mean, he's right. Everybody vacuums. But am I going to take vacuum advice from a tech tuber? But then I thought about it. Well, who am I going to take vacuum advice from? 
<laughs> like really like there's there's are there cleaning oh yeah there's probably cleaning channels out there who were reviewing cleaning equipment but um yeah gosh it's definitely hard working out if somebody especially on youtube or instagram if they actually are into something or if they've been paid to be into something it's just so tricky it's so tricky um and it's been girls someone said to me i had to finish everything before i died if that's true i'm going to be immortal that needs to be on a shirt awesome. definitely what's what's this one five five contact for next week's life that would be content like you know me hunting for the missing whips could be content for months uh <laughs> Oh, Talia, you can trust your friends, enablers, a lot of you. I'm trying to make the mouse click on it, but it's just being a poopy pants. <laughs> Speaking of mice, anyone got a suggestion for a new mouse? This one's going in the wheelie bin. I've had enough. The wheelie bin in Australia is the bin that we take our trash out to the curb in. Oh, it hovered over the leave stream button. Don't do that. It's telling me. It's midday. It's midday. It's time to hit, go. Hit. Yeah. Oh my gosh. All right. Okay. It's, it's 9 p.m. yesterday here. It's 9 p.m. yesterday. <laughs> well, you guys are in the 12, future. We are in the future. And in the future, um, mice don't work. Um, they, they're either invading local farmland, which is happening. There's a massive mice plague happening in Australia at the moment. Um, they're either invading or they're not working. Yeah. Yarn Dragon's Creations. I replaced the battery yesterday. <laughs> it's still not working. I don't think it's a battery problem. So um, it may have been dropped too many times. How many years go between the whole mouse thing? It, it's I not every know. year. It's not every year. And this is apparently it the worst is, one no. in memory. No. Um, like to the point where the government are helping people to repair houses and things like that, but they're not really doing a lot for the farmers. Um and there's just like massive crops that have been destroyed and and crops that are still in the ground. They're not even being harvested yet. They're still growing and they're being destroyed. Yeah. Um, and like there was, I saw this thing on Today Tonight. No, a current affair. So take it with a grain of salt because it's like sensationalism. It's not news. It's I don't know how to describe a current affair to somebody who hasn't seen it. Don't bother watching it. Um, but um, they had this like very sensational story but they had footage of and photos of people who wake up and were being chewed on by mice Oof. and they've got wounds and they've and so this is how bad it is the mice aren't afraid of the people there's so many of them that they don't care anymore yeah. so yeah um i just need to say i have a logitech mouse everybody it is a logitech mouse but it's a couple of years old so you know, but I like my Logitech keyboard too. What was that? My 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 little Logitech little, baby mouse. You got a little little baby one. I've got this one, which has got like a little indent on the side for my thumb. Um, yeah. This one has denim on it. Urgh, How fancy is that? That one's got jeans on. You got you've right. even got clothes on your mice. There you uh, go. <laughs> All right, um, I'm just having a quick scroll through here. Um, there's an 80, 90 year old woman. They have to keep their food in eskies because it's the only way to mouse proof it. So eskies are coolers, I want to say, where you put your ice in and keep all your meat and everything cold, and it's like a double wall, thick plastic thing. We call them eskies. Um, and Kim wants to know how you sanitize your denim. Um, your denim mouse it has not been an issue <laughs> wow <laughs> I, I, I guess I, I guess I could they're giving the stuff away here now pretty much oh. <laughs> I'm just cleaning the sensor just to see if that's what the problem is because I, it won't let me use it to end the stream, you guys. And there's no way for me to get to it. So this is, this is a stream that never this ends? This is a stream that never ends. On and on it goes. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't mention I, that when I invited you. Scott's like, I can leave whenever I want. <laughs> I picked a great day. Yeah, this is... <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so Kim loves her pebble, which is a Logitech pebble. So I'll definitely look into that one, Kim. Um, Sally has a Logitech pebble as well. John says an Eskimo was a cooler as well. Thank you, John, for confirming that. Mm -hmm. um, oh gosh. Um, Alison says her sister works in uh, a sister in law works in a nursing home out in the country, and it's very common for them to find met mice in the beds when they're changing the sheets. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Nope. Nope. I'm out. Um, all right. Sally, I know what context you said that in. I'm still not reading it out loud. Um, so, but I gave the I gave the sensor a little wipe down, and it seems to be working a bit better, at least for now. Um, Scott's like scrolling through to work out what Sally said. <laughs> um, this been girls. There was a family on the news yesterday whose house burned down because the mice ate the electrical wires in the wall. Yeah, they're fundraising for that family now. I think. All right, you guys. I have got control of the mouse again temporarily scott i want to say huge 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 thank you for coming on and being the guinea pig and hanging out with us fiber ruffians talking all sorts of fibery trash and it has been so much fun and i'm so glad you could do it and i it was fun thank you for having me i mean this was great so awesome. if you ever need me if you ever need me back let me know oh, we can yeah. do null binding we can do null binding Okay, you're on. You could teach me null binding live. I have to learn how to null bind. <laughs> me too. <laughs> well, this is your heads up. <laughs> this is your heads up. Yeah. Find a YouTube video. Um, right. uh, Kim's also saying, and thank you for pointing us to the sheep file. Not there, a problem. I'm just going to turn around. There's just going to be sheep everywhere now. Kim's going to just turn up and just leave them behind every time she comes over. More I'm okay with that, better. by the way, Kim. Yeah. I'm okay. Um Everyone's having said they've had a good time. Now, binding. It's not next week, John. <laughs> Impatient much. Next week, I have to work out if there is a live stream. Next week, I will be setting up for the Crochet Guild of Australia's first conference. Um, I'll have some time in the morning, so I'm tossing up whether or not I can do something basic from my accommodation before I head up. So I've I think that's the plan. It'll be a shorter live stream than usual because I can't finish at noon because I have to be somewhere else at noon. Um, but I think that could be a bit of fun. Now that I've got this software, it actually runs on my, what I call my daily driver laptop. It's the one I do for, it's lightweight. It can throw up my handbag kind of one. It can run on that. So, um, yeah, it'll be, it, I won't have this camera, which is pretty, um, but it'll it'll work. We'll be able to talk. Um, so that will be the go for next week, hopefully. Fingers crossed I can do it. If I don't have proper internet, it's not going to work. Um, everyone's saying they had a great chat, so that is awesome. Do a stream from the show so we can watch you setting up. Nah. <laughs> no one needs to see that. It, it's really never pretty. <laughs> Like you're in daggy clothes with high vis vests on, bending over in the worst possible angles. It's not going to happen. Um, John says, I need a Crochet Guild of Australia shirt to wear to Crochet Guild of America. I mean, that sounds fantastic. I don't know if they're doing shirts. If they are, I'll message you. Um, I don't take dares, Alison, just saying. Um <laughs> We're all, you're right, guys. It has been fantastic, and thank you so much, Scott. Um, and yeah, it has been awesome. I'm going to see if I can do a thing here. Um, technically, it was set up, but whether or not it'll work is another question. Hang on. Yeah. Oh, the mouse isn't working again. All right. No, no. Shush, shush, shush. It's working now. All right, you guys. I'll catch you later. Um, Scott, don't go anywhere. I'll, I yeah. I'll all right. Bye. Thank <music> you.